Well, hello there. You know, lately I've been working on a few history-related videos, but they're taking a bit longer than I anticipated, so I decided to do something a bit different. This is part one of a 25-part series that I was going to call 25 films that Jeff likes and you should watch so you can tell Jeff just what he got wrong. But instead, I'm going to call it 25 Groovy Flicks. In each one, I'm going to talk about a film that I really enjoy, one that I watch over and over, and I'm going to speak about it in a very biased way. Today, I think I'm going to talk about, um, hmm, where did I put that DVD? Oh, it's right here. It's Pie by Darren Aronofsky. This film I watch again and again. It's from 1998, and it's the subject of this video. <laughs> here, Jeff, to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So Pie is a 1998 American psychological thriller film that is anything but normal. It was the first film by Darren Aronofsky, who wrote and directed it. Now, Aronofsky's gone on to do other films like Requiem for a Dream, The Fountain, The Wrestler, and others, but this is where it all started. It's a very low-budget film, made in black and white for about $60,000, and that's amazing. It stars Sean Gillette as Maximilian Cohen, a mathematical genius who believes numbers are the answer to, well, everything. He believes there's nothing in life or nature that can't be solved by using numbers, or at least that's what he comes to believe as the movie rolls along. Now he's got all kinds of problems. He has headaches, he's paranoid, he takes pills and has nosebleeds, his migraines cause him to black out, and well, he's just a mess. He's a trouble loner who seems to only talk to a little girl who lives in the same apartment building as he does. Now, in his little dank apartment, he has a strange computer thing that he calls Euclid, and he's trying to use it to predict the stock market. Others are interested in his work. There's a group of Hasidic Jews who believe that if you can convert the Hebrew alphabet into numbers, you can use the Torah to get hidden messages from God. There's also a Wall Street firm that wants to make a deal with them, and they tempt him with some sort of supercomputer chip that they have. Look, I'm probably doing a poor job of explaining it, so why don't we watch the trailer? Twelve forty-five. Restate my assumptions. One. Mathematics is the language of nature. Two, everything around us can be represented and understood through numbers. Three, if you graph the numbers of any system, patterns emerge. Therefore, there are patterns everywhere in nature. You ever hear Kabbalah? Jewish mysticism. Insomnia haunts him and he twists and turns in his bed. Maybe that pattern is like the pattern in the stock market. The Torah. This 216 number. This is insanity, Max. Or maybe it's genius. I have to get that hold, number. Hold on, you have to slow down. You're losing it. You only gave us part of the code. Now give us the rest of the code so we can set it right. You are only a vessel from our God. You are carrying a delivery that was meant for us. There will be no order, only chaos. Did that help? Probably not. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that. Max goes through a lot, and it gets very complicated. Things keep on building, Max's headaches become worse, and his paranoia grows. And I'll just say that Max comes up with a very drastic solution to his problems. Now I have a love for low budget films and I also love films that are strange and unusual and this film fits the bill on both. The film is bizarre, intelligent, and it reminds me a bit of David Lynch's Eraserhead. Not in plot, not at all, just in its look and feel. It's stylish and engaging and, well at least that's what I thought. Darren Aronofsky was born in Brooklyn in 1969 and some of the locations in the film were ones that he remembered from as a child. He studied at Harvard University where he majored in social anthropology and he studied filmmaking. 
The film's roots started when he was a sophomore in college. He and a couple of friends were in southern Mexico drinking beers at a Mayan ruin when he noticed ants on an anthill. Now, if you want to know more about that, you'll have to listen to the commentary because I'm not going to go into the whole story, but that's why ants play an important role in the film. Now, speaking of commentary, I've watched the film many times and listened to both Aronofsky and Galette's commentary, and I still don't know what the film's about. But I think that's the point. If I totally understood it, it wouldn't be any fun. But I think if I had to guess, it has something to do with, well, ignorance is bliss. If by chance you're under the impression that this movie is based on math and math theories, well, you're wrong. Now, the acting in the movie, which sometimes in these low-budget movies can be pretty bad, I thought was really good. And the fast-paced editing, when you combine that with the electric techno soundtrack, creates a frantic mood. You really feel like you're getting into the head of a man going crazy. And the graininess of the black and white film gives it a brilliantly surreal, almost nightmarish look. Now, I won't lie to you, this film is not for everyone. Just go to the IMDb page and read some of the reviews. There are some people who hate, hate, hate this film. Though on Rotten Tomatoes, it has an audience score of 85%, which is pretty good. And the majority of the reviews on there were positive. Victor B. gave it 5 out of 5 stars and wrote, A bizarre thriller that is as smart as it is unique, and you don't have to be a math whiz to get it. Despite a small budget and offbeat subject matter, the film manages to draw you into its odd little web of intrigue and suspense. But not everyone agreed. Scott R. gave it a half star and wrote, The movie clearly thinks it's brilliant, but there's no tension. It seems more like the ranting and raving of a madman. To each his own, I guess. But, you know, one of the reasons I think people hate this film is that it doesn't answer the questions that it asks. People want closure in their films. They want the bad guys to get their comeuppance. The plot needs to be wrapped up in a nice little package. And personally, I think the ambiguity of the film is what makes it wonderful. I love that, just like, just like 2001 A Space Odyssey. But the bottom line is, if you want to be cool like me, you have to watch and appreciate this film. And if you don't appreciate it, you decide you don't like it, well, that's fine, too. I guess you can still be cool. Anyway, this is probably the most uncool man on the Internet saying thanks for watching. And I'll be back soon with film two of my 25 groovy flicks. Thanks for watching. Bye.